G'day folks, welcome back to the channel for part 13 of our Aether Pets Ritualist playthrough, uh, where we are heading into hell, um, or at least a close approximation of it. So we're off to Barrowholm, and uh, we're going to run north. Um, we've got some, some gear to put on, but we need level 65 for these, and these are 55, so... Got some stuff on the way. Should be good once we get there. Um, last episode, I swapped out of the dual wield and uh, put a shield on, which definitely will help with toughness. Uh, even if if nothing else, I mean, there's a ton of resistances on that thing, so it should be useful. Anyway, let's get on with this. Uh, there will be some more wraiths on the way that I'm going to make sure to kill. Because even though we have a couple of these uh, bound wraiths, uh, none of the stats on them really, uh, I'll say, really matter at all. Because they're for um, their skill points for other classes and stuff, and casting speed, which you just don't need. Uh, so um, we are down to nine skeletons now, which is not ideal. Um, and I'm also missing the uh, the relic, not the relic, the metal. That I wanted to get, which was from, um, I'm pretty sure it's either the Wendigos or the, um, the Basilisk. I think it's Wendigos. It's been a while. <laughs> um, it, it's only been probably two days, uh, between videos, but, um, it's been over a week between when I recorded the last one and this one. So, a bit of a gap, and, uh, I've been doing... Um, some oxygen not included, just as a break from uh, ARPGs. Busily avoiding all of the Diablo 4 rubbish. Um, seems like uh, quite a shallow game to me. Um, played a bit of D3, but it, it felt too simplistic to me. So I will be avoiding Diablo 4. Um, those of you who are playing it, I, I hope you're having a good time, though. Right. Um... We'll clear this out and uh, then go on through and start on Malmo proper. I am tempted to actually go and kill some. Actually, I think I will. Maybe, maybe after this. Maybe uh, when I get through to the other side and have a um, rift gate to go through, I'll probably come back and kill a few uh, basilisks to get that. Um, metal, even just one of them, um, just so as I have the MI that I need. Stats don't really need to be amazing, because the, um, the metal I have at the moment is, like, it's literally plus two to skeletons and nothing else. Um, keeping an eye on the skeleton numbers, I notice they are dying in here, um, so I will be resummoning them. Down to seven, back up to nine. I'm not surprised they're dying in here. There's a lot of things that put rubbish on the ground that they will stand in. All right, so we're heading north. Um, I haven't got the uh, the Grim Tools map open, but I kind of know where I'm going. Um, I don't recall if there's an exalted chest in here. I don't think there is, but there may be one in the top left corner. Um, we are just going to skip it. Um, exalted chests and normal are, eh. They're not amazing, put it that way. So we'll fight our way through here. Well, we'll, we'll let our skeletons fight the way for us through here. And, uh, head into the next area to find Olgrim. Skip all this. Okay, let's just have a refresh on our pets. Uh, so, Vitality is 76 and Chaos is 59. That's actually a bit low. Um, I would prefer to have capped both of them. Uh, but I'm not going to spend huge amounts of components and such swapping resistances around. Um, I can't put the... 
the Chaos Ward on my weapons because I would lose too much damage by doing that, so we will just be a little bit careful coming through here. Especially after what happened with that totem in Act 1 Elite. Um, we'll just, you know, just relax a bit. <laughs> Go a little bit slower. Uh, right, so we'll be able to get the Emboldening Presence soon. Uh, that'll be the main aura for this build, since we don't have access to the uh, Hellhound or the Familiar for more auras. So you can see what I was saying earlier in the series about how your um, ranged skeletons tend to just build up because all the melee ones will die. And this is kind of what I meant. Uh, with that said, though, they seem to be just all dying. <laughs> all right, we'll refresh all the pets. Obsidius the Titan goes down and all his friends are now dead. All right. Let's move on. Okay, so as with all areas, there are a few sort of secret or hidden areas in this one. And uh, as with all of those secret or hidden areas, there's um, minor loot in them. The loot's not amazing, but, you know, everything is iron bits, and uh, later on I'll be screaming for iron bits. Though that said, um, the iron bits from here are going to be like a drop in the pond compared to what I'll be able to get later, so I probably shouldn't bother. Alright, here we go. A little bit of a boss fight. Um, from memory, he does a bunch of fire damage and spawns volcanoes, something like that. Anyway, I'm about to find out. So he's chasing me, which is upsetting. Pets are actually holding up pretty well. I did just resummon them with only one of them dead. Um... Which I didn't need to do, but uh, down to six, so I'll resummon now. Let's see if we can get him to chase the pets for a little bit. There we go, got all the procs up, all the big pets are dead. There he goes. So we just keep moving, basically. Don't stand in that while you're looking at the loot. This nearly killed me in the uh, Archon playthrough. Okay, that's all gone. So we have an amulet of the grove. Um, of the grove, that heal proc, really, really nice. And uh, gloves of caged souls. I don't know, those are shoulders. So the bleed resist on that would be really nice for the pets. Actually, everything on that is really nice. The um, offensive ability is the only thing there that I can't use. Um, leave that alone for now, though. I was looking through some gear um, for pet classes the other day, and uh, the level 35 Rowari shoulder pads had some nice resistances on them as well. I can't remember back in, what, episode 7 or something when we got to level 35. I can't remember if I mentioned them, but um, yeah, definitely take a look at that gear if you're going to level a pet class. A lot of the faction gear has um, pet stuff built in, which can be quite nice. Now, I said in the other playthrough that um, you kind of have to be careful about Orgrim. If you piss him off, he'll eat your face. Um, he's a little bit confused, doesn't know where he is. So just um, make sure you tell him you're his friend and such, and just read the option before you click on it because otherwise you may find your playthrough ended, um, or at least delayed, because he will kill you. Um, the uh, the first blade of the Emperor definitely has hands. Alright. 
so again, just keeping moving. Let the pets kill everything for you. And keep your buffs up when you can. Do not believe there's anything in here that I want in terms of gear. So we're going to push through pretty quickly. Um, that, I should not have done that. That blink forward into an area where I could see there was going to be mobs next to where I landed. Very, very bad. Um, right, I am going to check the, the build now that we're at a rift gate. I'm going to see which it's Wendigo Eye, I think it is. The... Um, yeah, Wendigo Gaze, so we would have to kill Wendigos. Okay. I'm going to go for a quick run through the Gloomwald and just see if I can get one. And uh, if not, then um, then we'll continue onwards. So it's probably going to be, yeah, just looking at the Grim Tools. Uh, Wendigo Flayer and Wendigo Ma uh, Marrow Eater. So, just double check where they are so I'm not wasting my time with this. Meanwhile, I spy a totem. Okay, we got a potion, we got some blue pants, and a bunch of stuff. Taskmasters is pretty good. If you have a look at the, the pet bonuses on the Taskmasters, you'll see it comes with Aether and Chaos Resist for your pets. Um, that's actually really nice. Um, I really wish I didn't need the Aether Resist on that Zorhan's plate, because... Other than that resistance, this uh, these robes are actually considerably better. Um, right, so... Looks like the Wendigos spawn pretty much everywhere where there's Wendigos. So, we're going to kill a couple. This is not the house I thought I was going to. <laughs> this isn't where I parked my car. Okay, cannibals, not really what we're after. There should be some Wendigos in here. Uh, not in this room. Wretches, carnivorous plants. Uh, we did kill a Wendigo there, which is nice. Also found a totem here, which is also nice. I think we'll go for uh, a little run through the cellar, and then there's one place just outside the other side where I know that there is uh, large groups of Wendigos. I'll clear that, and then if I don't find one, I'll just move on. Notice the uh, skeletons are getting a bit low there as well. All right, uh, the fiend leather girdle. Not for us. Rift torn greaves. Um, good aether res, but otherwise no. This is something I was looking at earlier as well. The of kings um, suffix on that is that battle cry, which is seventy five percent all damage and ten percent total speed to. You and your nearby allies. Uh, that basically means that's a pet buff. So whenever I get hit, my pets get more damage and go faster for a bit. So 12 second duration every 30 seconds if I'm being hit is not bad. Um, unfortunately, there's no resistances on it, so I can't really use it. Um, 
Boots with pet resistances, again, very nice. Uh, again, I can't really use them. So we'll continue on through here. I hope Avarice is not home. I'm not sure how I feel about Avarice. She does a lot of AoE damage. Um, well, it doesn't matter how I feel. She's here anyway. So let's go play with her. Um, let's bring the pets out so they can actually hit her. And hopefully she just dies here. That would be nice. Pets are all dead, just the big ones. Okay, so she went down relatively cleanly. Um, these are all turned. I don't think these are what I'm after. Nope. So we go outside. And like I said, there's one section out here where I know there's a bunch of Wendigos. I'll kill them and then go back to Malmo, I think. Taking a little bit too long. Get my flowers and uh, continue on. Okay, so this is the... Well, these are cannibals. I think just up past here is where the Wendigos I was thinking of are. Just here. There we go. Marrow Eater. Hopefully he drops it. Let's just uh, keep moving. Wendigo Barb. That is not what I wanted. Just going to stand in poison there. Okay, so no dice, and uh, I'm not going to worry too much about it. We'll continue onwards. I'll come back and get one at some point. It does give us um, pretty big bonuses. So I'm just looking at it. Plus three to emboldening presence. We don't have that yet, but uh, we will in, on, in another level. Um, plus three to unled, undead legion, I think would be one point short of another skeleton. Um, but if we just get a, uh, you know, a helmet with plus one on it or something, maybe a, um, maybe a relic, um, then it gives another skeleton. And uh, it comes with the attack speed to Briarthorn and such as well. It's a pretty good um, metal. Would definitely be an improvement over the one we have currently, which is just a yellow, um, plus two to raise skeleton amulet, which is not amazing. Just clear some of this out. XP is never a bad thing. Okay, so I'm going to motor through here. Um, there's a lot of ground to cover before we get into Malmo itself, and uh, there's a helmet in Malmo that I really want to get my hands on. So when I was fighting the totem uh, in the Warden's Cellar, granted that totem is notoriously dangerous, and um, it managed to spawn uh, ethereal vanguard mobs instead of just the usual ethereals, which would have been considerably easier. Uh, but regardless, that totem was able to kill all of my minions, which is something that will not be possible uh, once I have that helmet. Uh, because I'll be able to summon skeletons seven at a time, and uh, they just won't be able to kill them fast enough. At least that's the theory. Uh, just a regular Void Touch Totem, so... Should be relatively weak. So Chaos Resistances are definitely not my strong point at the moment. Okay, there we go. So turn scripts. Uh, Elixir of the Aether. Oh, that's the Aether damage. I uh, had thought that was going to be the resistance potion. Fortunately, no such luck. There we go. This uh, law note here is free XP. Okay. I think if I find the portal, I will probably go in and kill Dravis's companions and such. Um, it's probably worth doing it for 
the quest. Um, the quest I'm talking about is the Dahlia, I think her name is. A quest line that started back in Homestead, where you can find her journal and uh, you can read her journal and then give it back to her. Um, if you don't do that quest, then she will not be here to give you the next one. So it's definitely worth doing. All right. So there's three places that the portal could be. Um, I'm just going to go find it. Um, this is not one of them. There could be a totem here. Um, obviously it's not because we've already already done the totem in this area. And one thing I will say about the uh, the actual city of Malmo is uh, you're going to start seeing your skeletons die much faster once you get in there because everything puts poison or acid or elemental damage on the ground. Everything explodes and, and leaves a puddle of something when it dies and um, your skeletons are just going to evaporate. There's not really a lot you can do about that in normal. Um, you can go out and spend a bunch of time shopping for various um, oh, wrong button um, for various you know taskmasters prefixes for elemental resistance and or for uh, aether and chaos resistance and then um, whatever the one is for elemental and stuff. But honestly, it's not really worth it. Just resummon and push on. Okay, here's the portal. So, I'm just going to go in there. I'll find um, Dravis's friend and his two friends and we'll kill them. Or Dravis's Thrall, I think it is. Um, he's right here. Yep. Van Drago's Thrall of Dravis. And then these minions uh, will actually heal him. So, hopefully I can kind of get them on their own. And of course we've got Gabalthoon as well. There's a lot of stuff here all of a sudden. <laughs> and everybody's dead. Okay. So that's the little guy gone. That's the Briarthorn gone. Half the skellies are gone. Okay, I think that crystal might be... Uh, giving us some issues here. Okay, Briarthorn's back. And that's the end of him. No pet stuff again. Unfortunate. Uh, right, let's get some more pets out. Uh, Briarthorn can use a refresh as well. These are um, pretty much max points in the big pets as well, and they're still dying. Kind of shows you how much you need those resi uh, resistances. So if we go down to the bottom of tab 2, we've got some Aether Resist, nothing for Vitality, although the Skeletons have some. We've got nothing for Bleeding, basically nothing for Pierce, nothing for Poison. Elemental's okay, Physical's okay. But um, the Chaos and Aether is uh, literally nothing. So maybe I should put those Taskmasters... Um, what, what was it? Was it Shoulders? Or... Can't remember. That's well, Boots there. Probably not a horrible idea. It would just lower my uh, characters. Two lowest resistances would be even lower. So maybe not. Alright. Let's go ahead and uh, kill these guys. So as I said, his friends are going to heal him up a bit, so we'll kill them first. Alright, that's them dead. And uh, pets need a refresh. Okay, there's him dead. There's an empowered marabound. Um, and another pet offhand. Let's just have a look at that. Where's the empowered one? Is that actually any good? Here we go. 
Can't use it yet. But um, it's definitely better. The plus two to Briathorn, plus two to raise skeletons. Only got bleeding resist on it though, which is kind of meh. And the physical converted to vitality. Um, yeah, no. That's uh, that's the end of that one. All right. Um, so that's all I actually needed in here. So now we got to find the exit, which is usually around the edge. Uh, lovely. So this oppressor here is going to reduce the max life of all of my pets and also myself. Subjugators of Blight. No. Here's the exit. I'm just going to poke my head down here and see if the... Yep, the treasure trove is here. So that's nice. And we got a relic, relic blueprint, which um, I'm pretty sure if you open a treasure trove and it can drop a blueprint, it will. Or at least it will try and it will re-roll if it can't. Um, it will try like 10 times or something like that. Um, if you're after blueprints, treasure troves are a good place to get them. Right, so we're going to head into the actual town um, and just see or uh, go into the sewers rather and get the uh, the other quest update for the Dahlia slash Dravis quest and I'm going to go back to just running because actually it seems like the pets tend to live longer if you just run past everything so they can get a few attacks in and then get teleported away to safety before they get killed. Um, it's not a perfect system, but it does seem to let them last longer. Okay, and there's a shrine down here. We'll go and grab that. I'm not sure how many devotion points I actually have at the moment. I haven't looked for a while. That's a lot of stuff. Okay, so we'll fight this. Um, hopefully we don't just have everything die immediately. That would be unfortunate. There's an elite in there as well. You see what I mean though with all the fire on the ground, the lightning on the ground, the aether on the ground, um, and the skeletons are all dead again. <laughs> this will happen in normal. Um, it, it just It's going to happen. There's nothing you can do about it. Just have to re uh, resummon. That may have been my last uh, Aether Crystal again, too. Uh, right. Not standing in anything, am I? No, good. Okay. Where were we up to? Um, do we go Empty Throne or Typhus? They both have really good resistances. So Typhus has got... Um, Poison bleeding there, and then physical there. I want to say he had another one. I thought he had more. Um, the Empty Throne is also good for pet resistances. You got 8% Pierce, 10% Aether, and 10% Chaos. So, um, I think we go for one of those next. And I think it's going to be Empty Throne. All right, so back to running through here as fast as I can. <laughs> uh, we uh, we don't need any gear from these guys outside. Um, we will go into the cellar, though. If you come in this entrance, it's closer to the quest item that Dahlia would be sending us in here to get. I'm actually not sure if you can get it without the quest. I assume you can, because most of the time you can do that. These Ascended Spellbreakers, I think, can drop the helmet that I want. Um, don't quote me on that, though. 
what it's that kind of mages will drop it. Yeah, Travis's letter, good. Good, good, good. Um let's kill Terranox. Just because why not? Aether Fire, Aether Tome of the Aether. Um, okay. I mean, Reap Spirit is a pet thing. It does Aether damage. Um, that percent Aether damage is not great for a pet build, uh, but for something like, um, I don't know, Aether Panetti's maybe? Um, <laughs> that would be pretty good. That's a lot of Aether damage percent. Um, especially in normal or in veteran difficulty, that's a lot. Okay, I'm just going to back up a bit to get the minions into a ball, um, which is actually probably not the best idea, considering they die to stuff on the floor. Um, and this is the road we want to go up, but unfortunately it's blocked, so we're going to go back the way we came. So you can cut through this house, and it'll get you to the same point. Um, this portal we're going to have to fight for, so I will just kill off anything that may have been following us. Nope, looks good. And uh, let's go. One thing about the mages that kind of sucks is they always, not always, but they'll often open up with the, the fireball nova, and if they happen to be standing behind a wall, it'll do literally nothing. Okay, 54. Alright, so that's done. Let's get all our pets back again. And we have a level up, which is going into Shaman. Okay, and I didn't speak to Olgrim back here. I think that's why he's not appearing. Yeah. Okay. So we talked to him. Now he ports here. Couldn't have done this all in one go. Apparently not. Alright, um, that's uh, 35 minutes, so I'm going to stop the recording here, and uh, I'll probably go and kill some Wendigos and, and hopefully get that medal, because it is really good, I kind of don't want to leave without it, but um, yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll meet you back here once I have the medal, so ciao for now. Just a quick interlude from exactly five minutes into the future. I came back to town to sell all of my stuff, and uh, look what I found in my inventory. Uh, the Occultist's Wendigo Gaze of Mending. Uh, I think, I haven't reviewed the footage yet, but I think I picked that up when I was on the way to the uh, portal. So, um, where would that be? Up here. Somewhere? Uh, where are we? So near Barrow Home, when we were on the way up to the portal to go through to Lone Watch. I'm pretty sure that's when it dropped. Um, I haven't checked, but um, yeah. So plus three to Emboldening Presence will be good in one level when we put a point into it. Uh, plus three to Undead Legion is good now. And plus one Summon Limit to Raise Skeletons is also good now. Um, we did lose another plus two to Raise Skeletons, so they will be a little weaker. Uh, but we do now have the ability to summon... 11 again, which we haven't had since uh, since I took the other um, Warden's Judgment off, and I think then it was uh, it was 10 only, so could go back to dual wielding them, and uh, we could have 12, but uh, I think I'll keep the shield for now, so we're waiting one more level to chuck this on, that'll give us um, plus 2 to raise skeletons on our offhand, and uh, some Primal Spirits, which will be coming in handy soon. 
Uh, right, so let's actually end the episode here, and uh, I'll see you in the next episode where we go through the Malmo sewers and probably do the Candle District. So, bye for now.